begin with this prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. Everyone is watching it, preoccupied with it, forecasting it, tracking it, preparing for it, and I hope evacuating for it. It's Hurricane Dorian. East Coast, again, there's a huge tropical storm, this huge hurricane is coming in, but we can see it. We can watch its path. Sometimes we take for granted how, what a wonderful blessing we have today that we can track storms. I mean, we, we knew about it when it was hundreds of miles away, when you couldn't even see it or tell that it was coming. We got this advanced notice, so people, especially right in its path, have been watching it. They watch it, and it allows them to protect themselves, their, their family, their possessions. But if you're watching it, you choose not to do anything. You choose to just ride the storm out. Well, you've had plenty of notice. So if your stuff gets wiped out, if family and friends get wiped out, if you get wiped out by the hurricane, it's your fault. You watched it. You knew it was coming. You could have protected your things, but you didn't. Now in our reading from Luke 12, Jesus says that he is coming back. And he gives us this advanced notice. So that we would protect our heavenly treasure with watchfulness. Now last week we talked a lot about earthly treasures. And this week we're going to transition and talk more about the heavenly treasures that we have. Last week we talked about all of the things that we work for, all of our possessions, that they are meaningless. And everything, everything is meaningless. King Solomon told us that in his book, Ecclesiastes. He said all the stuff that you work for and all the work that you do is meaningless. Because someday you're going to die and it's all gone. Everything that you work for, everything that you have is just going to be left to somebody else. So really it's meaningless. It's useless. Why do it? Why have it? Well, that's how it is for life under the sun, he says, which is a term that he uses to describe someone who does not have God in their life. If you don't have God in your life, you don't have hope for eternal life in heaven with him, then yeah, everything that you have, all the work, all the stress and anxiety that you put into your life is meaningless. If you just die, then it's gone. You can't take any of it with you. He says, yet for believers... All the work, all of the things that you have do have meaning. Because we recognize God has given us those things. And we recognize that all of the work with we, that we do serves Him and His eternal purposes. So today we're not going to talk so much about these earthly things that we have that eventually wear out. We're going to talk about that future treasure that we have in heaven. In heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys, Jesus says. This heavenly treasure is something that we wait for and not something that we work for. Because we wait for it, then Jesus gives us this encouragement to watch for it. Jesus tells his disciples to watch for the kingdom of heaven when they were preoccupied with the things that were going on in their lives, in this world, with their earthly needs or their earthly treasures. Just before our reading today, in Luke 12, Jesus says, And do not set your hearts on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your Father knows that you need them. The disciples had gone into a trap that affects all of us. A trap of worry. Worrying about all of the things that they need for their lives. They fill into the trap that all of us fall into of believing that lie. That God's really not going to provide all that we need. And so we worry about it. And as the disciples struggled with this worry, Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock. For your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. See, worry is an enemy of faith. Worry is an enemy of faith, and therefore the remedy for worry is watchfulness. 
watching for that treasure that God will give us in heaven, in heaven. Watching for what he has already been pleased to give us, this faith. Watching Jesus, the gift that he has already given us. And so paying attention to things that the world values, that takes our eyes off of watching for Jesus. And there are lots of things that we blame for taking our eyes off of Jesus. We come up with all kinds of things in our lives that take our eyes off of him. But really, there's just one thing that causes us to worry, that causes us to believe those lies, rather than watching for Jesus and being content and happy for what he's going to bring to us. Advertising. Advertising is not inherently evil. Advertising surrounds all of us every day. It's on basically every screen that we have of all different sizes. It's on billboards. It's even still in print. Yes, there are still print magazines and things out there. I don't know if you've seen one recently, but they are still there. They do still print ads. There are still advertisements for things in them. Even, even clothing has advertisements on them. We're surrounded by ads all the time, but we don't have to worry that we don't have every single thing that we have in those ads. We don't have to. Possessions. Our possessions are not inherently evil. Whether we see other people's possessions on social media or if we actually see them in person, we can still be content with what we have and happy that they have what they have doesn't have to consume us that we need to get what they have. Capitalism. Capitalism is not inherently evil. Really what capitalism is, a capitalistic society, just allows some people to take extra money that they have and use it however they want. Reinvest it, you can buy stuff with it, you can even give it to church or some other nonprofit. This gives you extra money to do things with. So whether we live in a society that is surrounded by advertisements and possessions are all around us and we are tempted to base our life and our worth off of those possessions and in a capitalistic society, or, or also, if we were completely alone, out in the middle of nowhere, but we had enough food and water to live, either way, we would still be consumed with earthly treasures. We would still be consumed with worry. We would still buy into the lies that we need more, that what we have is not enough. We do because we all have a sinful nature. See, that's that one thing that causes us to worry, causes us to buy into the lie, causes us to look down at this world and be consumed by all the things going on here so that we miss out on watching for Jesus and seeing the good things that he has waiting for us, and seeing the good things that he's given us now. So as believers, we protect ourselves from that sinful nature, from its lies, with the treasure that lasts, instead of the treasure that lies. In our reading from Revelation 3, Jesus described this heavenly treasure. He said, the one who is victorious will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Jesus is this one who is victorious. And all of us will be like him. Because Jesus was victorious over his greatest enemy, also our enemy of the devil. And the devil's greatest tool is death. But see, Jesus bought us back from death. And he didn't do it with things that wear out. He didn't do it with useless things. Instead, in 1 Peter, we hear what thing Jesus used to buy us back. He said, For you know that it was not with perishable things, things that wear out, that get old, that eventually are useless, such things as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. You weren't bought with those things. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. See, Jesus saved us from our sins, from that sinful nature we all inherit from our parents. This guilt, this deserving of punishment, he saved us from that. 
And he didn't do it with empty treasures, things that our hearts yearn for in this world, things like gold or silver that eventually wear out. He did it with his blood, the blood of the eternal God, blood that cannot end, that covers all sins. Jesus saved us from the devil. He saved us from death. He did it in his sacrifice, and he did it by his resurrection to prove that he has the power over life, that he rose and we too will rise, to go to live with him in heaven, to enjoy that heavenly treasure forever. These heavenly treasures that last will become ours. That's the tough part. They will become ours at a time that is unknown to us. That's really where our struggle comes in as believers, that we don't, we don't know when we're going to take hold of all God has waiting for us in heaven. Jesus said, but understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. See, we are certain that Jesus has saved us, and we are certain that we will go to live with him in heaven. We're just not sure when. So that means we always must be watching. We always must be ready for him. Jesus tells us that we must be ready for him. And for those who are ready, there will be good things for them. There will be good things for those who are watching. Now, in our lives, we have time to work with, and we have schedules. And we schedule time to be with God in our lives. We schedule time for worship, for Bible study, for prayer, for devotions. And that's good. And there are also times in our lives that we schedule for other stuff. Working, relaxing, going to school, going on vacation, time to eat, time to sleep. Those are fine and good things. But in all of that, we have to remember that we still remain believers. It's not like we're only believers or we're only watching that those little times that we carve out to spend with God. Then for all those other times, well, not really watching, not really believers anymore at that point. But we are always watching. That faith always is watching in our hearts, always ready for Jesus' return. And Jesus says it will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. See, we may not worship at 2 a.m. on Wednesday. Please don't request that either. <laughs> We're not worshiping at 2 a.m. on a Wednesday. But Jesus could come back at that time, and he says, be ready at any time. And so as we are always watching, as this faith in our hearts is always watching, it shapes how we live our lives. In our reading from Haggai 1, see, the Israelites were not focused on their heavenly treasures. They are focused on themselves and their own treasures, and it showed See, Haggai was prophet to the Israelites at a time when they had been freed from their captivity in Babylon. God had abandoned them because Israel had abandoned him, so he allowed them to be taken over by the Babylonians. They'd be taken hundreds of miles away. And now a generation, maybe even two, had died. They'd spent 70 years there in Babylon. But when they got there, God had made them a promise. Only 70 years, and then I will bring you back. And God made good on that promise. And a remnant had returned now to Israel, to Jerusalem. And you would think that after all of that, knowing the history of their people, that they had abandoned God, and so God abandoned them. But knowing that God was still faithful to say, well, after 70 years, I will bring you back. And actually watching him do that, you would think their hearts would be filled with joy. That they couldn't wait to get back to the temple to rebuild it, to again worship God, to again have prophets tell them and remind them of God's promises, but they did not. They all got back and they all picked out their own corners and staked off land and they started to build their own homes. And in response to that, God tells Haggai to tell them, give careful thought to your ways. 
give careful thought to your ways. Now, word of God worked in their hearts. They stopped. They stopped building their own homes, and they began to watch for God. And again, that showed itself because they came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. It worked in their hearts, so it changed how they lived. You could see their faith alive and active. You could see that they knew this temple was the place that would help them to watch and be ready for God to return. And it is that same word of God that works in our hearts, that changes our lives to always be watching. So then consistent time in the word of God keeps us from losing our focus on those heavenly treasures that last. Watching for Jesus to return means then protecting our time in God's word. Protecting that time. Because Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. <coughs> we protect our hearts by hearing God's word. When his word is in our hearts, we remain watchful. Even when worries or lies affect our lives and when threaten to pull us away from watching, When believing friends or family are taken from us, suddenly, or without any explanation, even despite all the wonders we have in medicine today, when they are taken suddenly from us, that worry threatens our heart, the lie that God is not there threatens us. Jesus said, I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. When we are not sure about what the future holds, when we're worried about what our job is going to be, when we're worried about school, when we're worried about finances, when we worry about who we're going to marry, we're worried about our kids. When all of that stacks up inside of us, we worry about it ourselves, and we worry because others are on us and telling us that we need to be worried about it. This is what God said to the people of Israel in Haggai. I am with you. And we worry that we might lose sight of our heavenly treasures. Or when we worry about friends and family, that they may lose sight of the heavenly treasures waiting for them. Jesus said, do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Whether you need peace, or strength, or comfort, or wisdom, or assurance, or even life itself, these are the heavenly treasures that we have from our God. This is what we have in Jesus. This is what we are reminded of in his word. Now at this point in history, everybody is talking about being ready and watching the path and preparing and evacuating for Hurricane Dorian, and for good reason. Because they're watching it. They see its path. They know what's going to happen, so they are ready. They know to protect themselves and their family and their possessions. Jesus said, watch and be ready. I am coming. He tells us to watch and be ready because the world is filled with lies. Lies about the treasures of this world. Lies that fill us with worry. That doesn't have to be us. Because of our God. Because Jesus said, do not be afraid, little flock. For your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Jesus won the kingdom for us. He did the work for us. He lived the perfect life. He gave his life. And he rose from the dead. We too will be raised to life. And he's coming back soon. So be ready. Protect your heavenly treasure that lasts with watchfulness. Amen. Amen.